G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's video we're going to be answering some questions left over in the comment sections on YouTube and also by some supporters over on the membership platforms. So I'll stop nattering on, flip the phone around and we'll get cracking. So to begin with, I thought we'd uh, feed the fish, they're probably not going to eat much because I uh, fed them only two or three hours ago. Uh, first question has been uh, about the, uh, the fish, if they're feeding okay again. And as you can see, they're feeding fine. Uh, what we think was happening was a couple of kookaburras were coming down here and pestering these guys first thing in the morning. And the last thing a fish wants to um, see when it looks up at the sunlight is the uh, silhouette of a couple of birds. For about three or four days there, they weren't feeding too well at all. But now, as you can see, they're pretty much well hitting the feed well. Uh, now on to a couple of other questions. So the first lot of questions are about the filtration devices we use, and in particular the uh, radial flow settler there. I've had a couple from uh, one from Amanda and one from BRT uh, in regards to adding another filter body, basically duplicating that filter and putting it either in front of or behind that filter to collect more solids. So if you aren't familiar with the radial flow settler, um, there'll be a link up there. And for you folks on Odyssey, uh, the links, any links I point up there too, will be down in the description below. So g'day to you Odyssey folks, by the way. Um, yeah, so with the filters, if you have a filter, then another filter plumbed through and then out to the sum tank or bio like we have or whatever, um, what you're basically doing is having the same flow rate just through two separate filters. Some people would think that that would extend the retention time, but it basically doesn't. You're still getting the same 1500 litres an hour um, through a 200 litre container and then another 1500 litres through another 200 litre container and that gives you, you know, the same retention time in both. What I would suggest you do is rather than set them up in series, like in one big chain, I would have an outlet coming out of here and splitting into two separate radial flow settlers and this little diagram will probably explain it better. So basically what we would be doing is taking the one flow out and splitting it into two and that would give us 750 litres an hour through each 200 litre drum and that would give us a retention time of around about 16 minutes which is basically doubling the retention time we would have if it was 1500 litres an hour coming through a 200 litre vessel. So if you are thinking of adding an extra um, radial flow settler because you can't find a large enough drum to extend your retention time, definitely helps if you can split the flow at the fish tank there and then plumb them separately. And as the plumbing leaves the two separate filters, you could either join them up so they could continue their way into a moving bed bioreactor if you have something like ours, or into the sum tank or other filtration, or you could um, leave them separate to flow into your sum tank or maybe send them out to different beds depending on which way you've got them set up. There you go folks, I hope that helps you. Um, definitely try and split the flow to increase your retention time. Increased retention time means a lot more solids falling out in the bottom of your settlers. And while we're on radial flow filters, Michelle has asked about the delivery of water into the radial flow settler itself. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a link down in the description if you're not familiar how these things work and another one on as to how you can build your own. Um, but the water basically comes in down through the bottom here, is delivered through a standpipe inside a stilling well where the water changes direction in a larger diameter pipe down towards the base of the radial flow settler. That basically slows the flow of the water once at the top and again as the water enters into the larger volume vessel below. Now Michelle was asking um, why can't you just pop it in through the top. Uh, the main reason that I can see is it would increase velocity down through that stilling well creating a lot of turbulence down around the base which would kick up the solids on the bottom depending on how you have it set up inside of course but there generally would be more turbulence down there making it harder for the solids to settle out. Now that's not to say you can't do this. Uh, good mate Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm, he's made up a funky little dispersal plate in the top of his radial flow settler. And so he can plumb the water in through the top, it hits that plate, it slows down the velocity and then basically carries on down through the um, stilling well, exactly the same as this, so he can draw the solids off from the base of his comb bottom tank. It can be done, um, I just wouldn't pour it in straight from the top. Uh, because it will cause the, um, the solids down the bottom uh, not to settle out as easily as if the water was slowed down a lot. 
Now on to another question about the radial flow settlers. Uh, this one comes from Ailey Farm Estates. Uh, how would you go about setting up a radial flow settler if my fish tank is low, like only two foot or about 600 mil high? Uh, moving it or lifting the fish tank isn't an option. Same with the radial flow filter, digging a hole isn't an option. What do I have to do? Now this layout sounds like it could be a pond. I'm going to be doing a clip on ponds later on, so keep an eye out for that. Or maybe a, a basic aquaponic system like the IBC chop and flip design. In systems like this, sometimes it's better just to run a pump in the fish tank itself, let it pick up those solids along with the water, deposit that into some sort of filtration device or settler, and then have it flow on down to your hydroponic grow beds. Now, in the past, I've used a canister filter. I actually have a clip on that. Um, you can check it out just up there. It's basically a container with a lot of media in it that the um, solids will collect in. And then once a week or every second week, depending on how many fish you have in the system, um, you just pull out the media and just give it a bit of a hose. Now you could go with a radial flow satellite like that one there, but the body of the unit would have to be fairly large. The reason being is when the solids are picked up by that pump in the fish tank, they're going to be macerated and turned into very small fine particulate and finer particulate needs a longer retention time in your radial flow settler for it to fall out of suspension. So I would suggest a larger volume filter in this case, or maybe consider something like a canister filter. Before we get on to the next question, for you folks who aren't familiar with our channel, I've got a number of um, clips already posted in playlists on how to start up your own aquaponic system. Everything from uh, how to do a basic build, cycling the system, and designs for a couple of basic filtration units like those jobbies there. So check it out, the link will be up there and also down in the description for you folks on Odyssey. Just quickly, I'd also like to thank those supporters who have left questions. I'm about to get to a couple of them um, under um, different posts on the YouTube membership program and also the Farm Your Own Yard page. Thank you very much, guys. Um, a quick shout out to to Travis. Uh, thanks for the Discord suggestion. I am looking at doing a Discord page for members in the future, maybe. I'm not too familiar with it. I know Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm has a Discord server, and I'll pop a link to his down in the description if you want to follow another aquaponicist over there. Um, I'm just getting a little bit over um, having to jump here and there and you know service everyone on uh, social media. Uh, so I'll look at doing a Discord, see how involved it is, and I might start one up in the future. Thanks for the suggestion, mate. Uh, enough of that. Uh, we'll get on to a bit of a common question I've got about pH. So I've got a couple of uh, questions from YouTube members. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, folks. Aquaponics Project is um, having problems keeping his pH down. Uh, is looking uh, for basically anything in the UK to help him lower his pH. I actually responded to him and went through a bit of a uh, discussion on um, how to do it and that sort of thing. Uh, but we won't get into that here. It just takes too long. And um, also we've got a question from Travis. Hey Rob, it'd be nice to get a clip where you can talk about the many products you use from pH up and down and what you use with pest control with my Amazon links to it. And yes, a uh, few folks aren't aware, I do have an Amazon page, links in the description, and I do receive funds as a commission if you do use my link. Now I won't get into um, everything to do with pest control here, uh, but I will go through what I use to uh, both lower the pH and also, um, as Travis asked, um, what I use to raise it. Uh, the pest control link will be coming in a couple of weeks time. Just a quick warning before we move on with this subject. Do not put acid directly into your aquaponic system if you've got fish. I have been contacted by a number of folks who have done just this and killed their fish wanting to know why, because they've read on forums and groups that you just put some acid in the system. Do not put it directly in your tank. Put it in your top-up water, lower the pH in your top-up water, and then please add that to the system. Never put acids directly in your aquaponics. Now, as to the products I use, well, there'd normally be two different acids here, um, but I lent a bottle to someone. Phosphoric acid is one you use. It's something that's available in most hydroponic shops, and hydrochloric acid is another one, or mutric acid, which you can buy pretty much well at any hardware shop. Now, what I um, do, just a quick rundown, is um, I would add it into the top-up water, as I just said, and then you just got to wait for um, the, the pH to settle out, and you can check out a clip up there that explains it. You'll find the um, pH will plummet, 
and then as the alkalinity or carbonates are consumed in the water the pH will rise again and you'll need to add some more acid in so take note of how much acid you put in um, so next time it comes around to lowering the pH it shouldn't be an issue but yeah hydrochloric acid is one and the phosphoric acid is the other you'll find this is the cheapest option um, but some people like to use the phosphoric because it's got phosphorus so yeah that's what I would use for lowering the pH now as for bumping the pH up uh, people will generally either use a hydroxide or a carbonate or some form of carbonate I've got calcium hydroxide and not only does it help um, nudge the pH up and is very very adjustable with the hydroxide um, you get a, a very accurate nudge once you know what you're doing but um, it also is giving calcium as well you can get potassium hydroxide I think it's used in soap making so that will add the potassium to the system as well as bring up your pH because both calcium and potassium are two elements that aren't in great amounts in the fish waste once the fish have assimilated what they need for themselves hydroxide potassium and the calcium very good at just nudging it up accurately now how much hydroxide to add to a system oh well, that's basically a bit of an art form because every system is different just as a bit of a guideline for my system here i pulled around about 250 to 300 grams worth of feed in a day and that means i need to add roughly around about two heaped teaspoons of calcium hydroxide a day just to keep that pH from falling below 6.5 every now and then I'll find that I don't have to add it for a day it just um, slowly keeps the water up um, but yeah roughly around about um, two heap teaspoons of this a day now the next lot is bicarbonates or carbonates now you can get a calcium carbonate um, just a garden line or you can get potassium bicarbonate uh, this is used as an acid modifier in wine making so I actually bought a bulk bag years ago and forgot about it while we were renovating and only just recently discovered it and I have been adding this in now the beauty of carbonates is it tends to take a while for the pH to fall again after you add it the downfall is if you add in too much um, it can stay very high for a long time I've worked out that in my system I need roughly two heaped dessert spoons of this to keep the pH up for two to three days Whereas, as I said before, I know pretty much all well how much of this to add every day uh, just to keep it in the sweet spot. Um, sometimes I find that I actually add a little bit too much by accident and the pH will go up to over 7 and then it takes uh, probably 4 to 5 days for it to come down to where I need to add some more in. So um, the downfall of this one is you tend to add a little bit more in and it isn't as an exact science is adding the hydroxide at least that's what I think now I have told you how much um, I've add in of these guys but just like with the acid just do a little bit at a time I'll monitor the pH in your system water and then add a little bit more as um, as required note it all down and after a while you'll get to know what the sweet spot is and um, yeah get to understand the uh, witchcraft behind adjusting your pH in your own system so as I mentioned before I am doing a clip on pest control in aquaponics I've just been waiting for um, my little guinea pig plant here to bounce back. Uh, you might remember it from a recent clip where it was just smashed by the caterpillars. A bit of a spoiler, as you can see the treatment I'm using is working nicely. Virtually no holes, even though the rain's washed a lot of the treatment off over the last week or so. So that clip will be coming very soon to the YouTube channel. And if you want to catch it, all you need to do is uh, hit that little subscribe button down there if you haven't already. And pound on the bell icon and fingers crossed YouTube will send you notifications. Or you can subscribe to me over on Odyssey if you're um, yeah, over on that platform there. And as always, thank you very much for coming along and checking out the clips. It'd be great if you could get, leave a thumb up down below and leave a comment as well, even if it's just a g'day Rob, how's it going, your hairy git? Um, I really do appreciate it. Uh, there will be that caterpillar clip treatment clip coming out soon. And I'll have a bit of a general garden roundup clip coming in a couple of weeks because we're getting some work done. Fingers crossed, uh, just waiting for one more quote to come back. And then we can hook in good and proper with the veggie patch down the back. But I'll stop rambling on. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own aquaponics and gardens are booming. And I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Take it easy.